right. Well, Joe, you are coming to us from the San Francisco Bay Area. Yep, Oakland and, specifically. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we had not met before a couple of days ago, but mm-hmm. I came to an event where we screened a movie. Now, were you involved with the production of this film? I was. I know you're I am. in the film. Yeah. I, I, I am. And, uh, I, I do have executive producer credit, but that's just kind of one of these things where we, you know, you decide what roles people are going to have in different ways. And the unique thing about this is that there, the there's a filmmaker, there's a producer, mm-hmm. and then I was asked, would you like to have, you know, this credit? There's another woman in the film named Stephanie Wynn, who's important because this idea of putting a movie out anytime involves a team. It's a real team effort. Now, the artistic side of this, though, comes down to the filmmaker, mm-hmm. usually. And I'm saying this because a lot of people said, oh, you know, and why did you choose this particular thing? We had discussions about certain things. And we have a basic idea. You kind of lay out a template. The woman behind this whole thing cannot be named. Her real name, Her cannot. Mm. she cannot be known. The one who initiated this project. Yes. Yeah. And, and the woman who actually had all the footage, you have a vision, you've got everything in front of you, and you're telling a story with a documentary just mm-hmm. like you are with other things. And with the goal of what this film was supposed to be about, which is highlighting the harms, the medical harms that are being Mm -hmm. done with something that is now instituted by our government, instituted by the American Medical Association, Mm -hmm. instituted by the American Academy of Pediatrics and everything. Anybody that's a psychotherapist these days, marriage and family counselor, they're supposed to abide by this idea that gender is on a spectrum, and we're gonna get into the difference between gender and sex, but the genders on a spectrum and and all of this is affecting that it's affecting medical medical schools and mm-hmm. language, which we know yeah. always starts things and then language moves into law and then it moves into all these various areas of yeah. medicine, education, everything. And it's already doing that in this country. And this has been going on uh, while people are finding out a lot now. Here we are in um, the fall of 2023 People are just the hot issue a lot are people attending school board meetings Mm -hmm. because they're finding out that their kids are literally having access, kindergarten, and and if you go to preschool, this is going on as well, access to imagery that's literally, mostly we would consider it pornographic. And not only that, on the weekend, Drag Queen Story Hour, which is nothing but grown men in lingerie and exaggerated uh, versions of what the female is supposed to be yeah, in almost terms a caricature, right? of a very yeah. a huge caricature yeah. and extreme stereotypes yes. of what femininity is. Right. And kids are seeing these grown men and, and, and the moms and dads and mostly moms are taking their kids like this is fun and entertaining thing mm-hmm. while men are literally shaking their junk right in front of a child's face or the children are on their laps. Why is it that grown men all of a sudden and strangers are allowed to touch children, invite them in while they're grinding, yeah. you know, on another child sometimes. There's there's imagery from all over the country. There's images in all the English-speaking countries. Mm-hmm. In England, Scotland, Ireland, Australia is getting hit really hard, and so is New Zealand, where it used to be pre-internet. It took Australia and New Zealand a long time to catch up to fashion. Bell bottoms hit them way after... You know, we were already wearing them, right? Well, now because of the internet, you know, we're much more connected. We're We're not going to complain about bell bottoms. No, 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 we're not going to get into that. (laughs) Although I don't know, but uh, anyway, it's it's no longer like that. Things are moving very quickly, so that we're caught up with fashion and everything else, and it means also anything that's coming out of Hollywood, right? Anything that's we have gotten from, I will say, blame it on Canada. Everything that's happening on the West Coast, and I feel like I've come to Virginia. Yes, I came for the Richmond International Film Festival because they were brave enough mm-hmm. to show your film, the film, yeah. um, which this is the, I'm going to sort of backtrack a little bit. So you're seeing a DVD for No Way Back. No Way Back is the renaming of Affirmation Generation. Mm-hmm. And going back to, I'll say why this happened, going back to the woman that, that, thought of this whole thing she's a mother who has a child who thought that she was the opposite sex Mm. they want to use words like trans 
They want to say things like non-binary. Right. They want to say things like pansexual, mm -hmm. uh, you know, gender fluid. Mm -hmm. The whole reason why Language. these, all these words Language. are coming up so that we don't think about biological sex. Yeah. And a lot of people in general don't want to use, especially in America, there is a, there's a huge prudishness. There always has been in sex. America yeah. of the word sex. Yeah. So that when everybody says sex, they are immediately thinking of the act of sex. Right. And we have to use the word sex a lot these days. What mm -hmm. we're talking about is biological sex. Like keep men yeah. out of women's sports. I shouldn't have to say keep biological men out of women's yeah. sports it should it means that already right. men right. and women boys and girls that's all there is mm -hmm. but what's happened is and it's been happening over time is this reframing of our language the words that we use mm -hmm. the hijacking of certain and taking advantages and weaponizing situations like off camera earlier we were talking about desantis completely getting railroaded with this whole he put out the law, you know, don't say gay. And that isn't at all what was going on. Correct. He didn't ban any teachers from letting, you know, children <laughs> know that, especially with social media. I mean, yeah. kids check on teachers and, yes. you know, we all see some things that are going on with people. That wasn't what they did at all. And now in 2023, because there are parents that are finding out that they're even preschoolers, are being taught the gingerbread person, which was brought in by an organization called Gender Spectrum, which very recently, just out of nowhere, it seems, let everybody know that they're stopping their their in-person services. They're only going to be online now. This just came up like two weeks ago. Mm. All of a sudden, might have even been last week, but um, in the month of September, I believe it was the 27th, Wednesday the 27th, they were going to stop all of their in-person yep. services, gender spectrum has been at the root of getting so much of this stuff to the schools, showing up at, you know, to protest at libraries if somebody's trying to talk about right. sports and the fairness of sports or even the film Affirmation Generation yeah. in Davis, California. I got invited by some moms and citizens there. And, you know, anybody should be able to use the public libraries and get a room and you know, you put in for it ahead of time, get yeah, a nonprofit yeah. or something to first request come, first that. served. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Affirmation Generation was protested there, but the paid, you know, the paid head in that town in Davis got her little group of people to try to stop the film. They couldn't do that, you know, and they had followed all the rules mm -hmm. and everything. But then they physically came there, and it's fine. They got to protest. You know, they were outside of the library. Which is also free speech. But then they yeah. forced themselves inside. Yeah. And the, again, this is a paid employee. I don't know if she is any longer because of what Gender Spectrum has just done. But the head of their thing planted herself right next to the screen for about the first 50 minutes of the film. Uh -huh. Trying to cause distraction. Right. So people wouldn't see the film or learn anything. And this is, to me, is as absurd as it's the most fascist thing that has happened. And it's repeated patterns of trying to get people to shut up. Yeah. Just don't talk about this thing. Right. You're being racist. You're being this and that. It's You're a bigot. It's just this whole thing. Free speech. When free speech mm -hmm. leaves, I can hate something that you want to talk about. I yeah. can absolutely hate it. I could disagree with right. it, whatever. I will die for your right to say it, though. Mm -hmm. If you want to show a film... And that used to be the American way. All of a sudden, it's quite different. Yeah, yeah. and you should be able to show anything. And, and the little bit that I know about you, and yes, just meeting you the other night, and then just you know looking at some things and thinking again, when someone told me that you had this book, and this is an examination, I don't know what the whole purpose is, but that yeah. you, obviously that you're interested in the Quran, that you would even write a book about it or whatever, that there's some pushback. We have the right to study whatever we want, if we want to make a film about whatever we want. And as long as people want to see it and have it somewhere and they're curious about the subject matter, yeah. and you would think people would be really curious about a film that doesn't take a whole lot of sides about anything except yeah. examination of the actual medical harms that are you know they're they're documented well, it's a piece of investigative journalism it is right it is i mean this should this i would love to see you know now called no way back 
This got re it got a little bit of rebranding. They changed the graphic and called it No Way Back because we had the miracle of getting somebody that believed in our film so much that also has the skill and the marketing abilities to get it on a wider place. I know my goal and the woman that had the idea about this film, the woman that actually made the film, we all wanted to see this in the theaters. At the very least, be able to get some big platform, you know, yeah. like Hulu, Amazon, somebody have this streaming so people could see it. That you can't even. No one so was going to take that tell on. Tell us what was. So there are a couple things here, and we're mm -hmm. talking more broadly about the suppression of information and mm -hmm. so forth, mm -hmm. which you mentioned one of the people who is uh, a key or the person key behind this uh, cannot be known. Why? Yes. Why would that be? Why would it be so mm. dangerous to be known to do something that is basically a piece of uh, investigation into a very relevant issue that mm -hmm. we're all talking about? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't people want to hear various perspectives as they're making up their mind? You tell me. I mean, yeah. here's the thing is that the suppression of truth is exactly, you know, what you're saying it's free speech. Why have we moved? And I said, I'm a lifelong Democrat. For me, the Republicans were always the evil ones trying to suppress information to harm, you know, marginalized people, didn't care about women. You know, of course, the big issue is abortion. You mm -hmm. know, do we have the right not blah, blah, blah. And that was your perspective from from youth. My whole. Yeah. yeah even even, you know, my parents were Democrats. Yeah. My dad hated Kennedy, but. Got to vote for him, yeah. you know, and I just, I spoke with some Republicans since I've been here in Virginia that said, oh yeah, my dad hated, you know, we had the same discussion, yeah. hated some Republican. I can't remember if it was Bush or somebody else. Yeah. You got to vote for him. Yeah. And it's this, this thing about free speech, I think goes hand in hand with what we're experiencing now and cancel culture. And I can speak specifically to the women that cannot real reveal their names around mm -hmm. this. And even the people who ended up being the distributors for this now they can't be out there blab as in their own mm -hmm. names that they're they're behind this. We're talking Hollywood. We're practically every mm -hmm. buddy knows somebody. Uh, Bill Maher, you know, yeah. has said this in a bit. Right. There's um, some unlikely alliances forming around mm -hmm. these things of people who would ordinarily be on other side. Rand Paul has said things that I'm watching and going. That sounds like a radical feminist. That, well, guess what? A radical feminist had a hand in. Not just his, but several politicians that have been like, okay, what is going on? I need to address this thing. And I'm, I'm pretending at this point that I'm, a, um, you know, working with, with a Republican right now mm -hmm. who said, well, I have, because I just met with some Republicans who didn't know that men are being not just allowed, but being pushed into women's prisons. Okay. Yeah. This is going on. And it's not just Republicans, but there are some Democrats that actually don't know what's going on, but they also don't want to know what's going on because the PAC money or whatever they're doing, you know, they, they got to carry that message, you know, that men can be women and women mm -hmm. can be men and not question it because whatever. The thing is, there is so much money behind the Hollywood machine, behind advertising in New York, every play that anybody see, everything. Yeah. Because these are the messages of entertainment, right? That get a lot of cultural messages and stuff out. But when we and look they're very at, powerful. Very powerful. Yeah. And of course, you know, I know a lot of women now in England who are women campaigners against the same thing, child medicalization, all the is issues, prostitution, pornography, all this stuff that, that several of us have been fighting for years. But Nobody listens to women, really, when it comes down to it. I mean, there's the thing. You get a guy to say similar things. All of a sudden, Matt Walsh's film, What is a Woman? Which I do recommend, by the way. Yeah. But the thing is, it takes money to produce something does, like yeah. that. But then a man comes out also looking like he does, yeah. saying the things that he's doing. Um, oh, interesting. He says some of the same things. Some of us have been saying for years while this machine to erase women, yeah. erase girls... And then start going after children and their bodies. Yep. Get them all confused about their own, you know, this whole thing is designed to unmoor us all from our sexed bodies. Mm -hmm. So we don't, again, don't think about biological sex because we just have to allow everything to be free and open. It's, it's such a quagmire and it's such a rabbit hole that people start, maybe even people listening to this now, will feel overwhelmed and say, where is she going with this? We start with free yeah, speech right. and we go to child medicalization, right? And yeah. we go to the, there's... Well, I do want to get over to that because that's a huge 
issue. You know, we think one of the things as we sort of conceptualize where we want to go with this conversation is number one, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And what's going on, as you've mm-hmm. said, is there's a change in the language. There's a change in uh, the way that we treat ideas that we don't agree with. Mm-hmm. I mean, you live close to Berkeley. How, mm-hmm. does, how does Berkeley feel about uh, the oh, freedom of speech I these don't days? Even, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not about, I mean, our only and one of the only ones in the country left, I think, listener-sponsored radio stations yeah. has been completely captured by this. Yeah. Now that I can't speak for every single person that contributes and has shows, you know, on KPFA Berkeley, Mm -hmm. but I know there are a good number of us who are disaffected Democrats, liberals, independents, Mm -hmm. whatever, that really don't like this. But if you say anything, you're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you account, anybody sees that you say anything like, you know, gee, I was thinking trans women aren't really women, they're men. Oh my God. And then you don't even know you might get kicked off of that social platform, although it has gotten a bit better. It's gotten a bit better at this point, I have to say. We'll we'll see what happens with Yeah, Yeah, we have to wait and see. It's a wait and see, yeah. But this thing of free speech and talking about the arts and going back to the to the film Affirmation Generation. Why the woman that conceived of this, who is a mom whose daughter started to get wrapped up into this at Mm. like age 14. That's a very personal reason to be involved. Yes, and this, she's one of thousands of parents across the United States and in Canada. So we're talking North America, but in the United States, some parents who saw this going on with their own kids. And then they met other parents and went, oh, people are just feeling nuts. All of a sudden, their kid, Jane, and this started with girls mm-hmm. and Abigail Schreier's book, yes, Irreversible Damage, book, yeah. girls, you know, having social circles and talking, talking and socializing while a lot of boys are more doing outward things and stuff like that. Girls wanting to have their healthy breasts removed at age 12, 13, 14, yeah. 16. I was like, what? Well, you don't, I mean, it used to be anorexia. Now it's this competitive thing of who's going to get the breast cut off. Is that just a sign of commitment? Uh, that, that there's social status uh, associated with going through with something like this? How does this play out? And why is it mostly girls? Well, it started there. It started there again. And I'm saying because as a girl, it, it, girls have social circles. Their concentration yeah, okay. is make-believe dolls, thinking of the future, okay. having babies, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And of course, things have changed since they... Yeah. Feminist movement and the second wave, we hope that now girls are thinking more like if they do want to have families and stuff, maybe they can also or not have jobs or do that. And then, you know, there's more options. Of course, since my mom had me in 1955, I thought the only thing I could be as a woman was to be a secretary. I had only like three jobs, right. a secretary, a teacher, a nurse. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be a fireman. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I was like many of my heterosexual female friends, a tomboy, you know. I pushed the clothing um, issue when I was in junior high, you know, because uh, yeah. you know, we're talking 1970, was 1979 or something. I was like 14 years old. I just decided to wear pants to school one day and I got called into the office and I was like, show me the, uh, the dress code. I learned that there was no dress code. There wasn't one, okay. Yeah, there was no dress code at our school. And uh, I pushed it. I got a couple of other girls to do it. Then all of a sudden, you know, it was like on 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 a Friday or a Monday, I showed up with pants on. And by whatever, it was like five days later, all these girls were wearing pants. Mm. And the boys were always supposed to wear a kind of jean. So you're saying you started this whole... I did. (laughs) Listen... I would say myself and hundreds of women yeah. that were in different little towns all over America, but definitely the second wave of feminism didn't even uh, didn't even happen. I was saying it was sixty nine, nineteen sixty nine, and uh, I us go back a moment. When was I? Fourteen years old. So nineteen sixty nine, Ms. Magazine came out in nineteen seventy one. Mm. So I was ahead of the curve with pushing something in junior high. And then I get by the high school and I heard of this thing called feminism. It was coming from back east. That's all I thought. Mm. And this magazine came out and I wanted to know about it. But it was like all these women with hairy legs and they're throwing, you know, they threw their bras off and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I don't, I don't have anything to do with that. I didn't know anything. Well, part of that also was they were not messaging to any young lesbians or older lesbians or anything. Lesbians didn't exist with Gloria Stein and Bella Abzug and Betty Friedan. These Mm -hmm. are the three women that were, you know, the women's movement. Later we find out, of course, that Gloria Stein used to work with the CIA. 
Is that right? I didn't, I didn't know, know that. that. Okay. I didn't know that when I started yeah. to get excited then okay. about feminism and realizing they were just trying to get... Was that part of a CIA initiative or is it... Who knows? Okay. You tell you me. Yeah. Okay. To have okay. those three women who literally basically said in every messaging that they did, every meeting that they had and all this, lesbians were not part of the women's movement. It was basically, it was said like that. There were consciousness raising groups. It was all this stuff that started in the second waivers. That was very, very interesting, of course, psychologically, everything. But lesbians weren't even mentioned. And then when mm -hmm. they were, it was like, well, they're, they have to, like, they're going to have to have their own movement as if mm -hmm. we weren't women. Mm -hmm. There is that more of the compartmentalizing this of is going a to come human around to, being. Yeah, to what we're because talking Because this is yeah. what we're doing now. Again, if you say a trans woman is a real woman, yeah. what does that say about a real woman? Which yeah. that's the thing is no, there's no such thing Correct. as a trans woman. Yeah. So getting back to the filmmakers in this, and I was talking about parents that started to learn that this girl and this girl, and you asked me about that, that is where Abigail Schreier started to see from Lisa Littman's work, and they both show up in the have an appearance in the documentary. Mm -hmm. Lisa Littman did a study and saw that there were these social circles social of contagion. girls. Yeah. It was a social contagion. Yeah. And then she had coined this term, rapid onset gender dysphoria, yeah. R-O-G-D. Uh -huh. And then these parents became parents of R-O-G-D-K, P-R-O-G-D-K, mm -hmm. parents of rapid onset gender dysphoric kids. Oh, this is whole thing, right? It's a gender dysphoric. What that did, and a lot of us don't like to use that really anymore. We do it because it's it's become like a clinical, psychological. Or, yes, because yeah. it's this idea again. We want to get away from gender. Right. Back we want sex. people to yeah. stop using gender Correct. because it's not that a child is gender dysphoric. That's a term of language. It's not connected exactly. to physical reality. So right. you as a man, and if you as a boy weren't loving the idea of joining the military beating up other boys, mm -hmm. uh, getting into sports even more intellectual. Man, I'm just saying this stuff. I don't yeah. know about you personally, but I have male friends like yeah. this that immediately they were called gay if they didn't. Yeah. The things that boys do in the social <laughs> structure of gender roles that yeah. are all social. Right. So, yeah, we get men that are that tend to be softer sensitive in ways about people they become psychologists you know um, there's all kinds of professions that a lot of women you know are seen typically to be nurses mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we started having male nurses but i didn't grow up with you know male nurses doctors were all men yeah nurses were all women yeah secretaries are all women you didn't see any male secretaries yeah. stewardesses on the plane mm -hmm. You didn't see any men. I mean, that a lot of people are used to that stuff now, but in my time, and I'm almost 69. We've it, seen a transition, yeah. It did so not. So my wife is a fellow. I mean, we we went through this. We did, uh, she, my wife went through medical school, and then she we did uh, part of her, we did one year of her medical training in the UK. She did a rotation, a uh, surgical rotation in the UK. Actually, surgeons are not called doctor. They're called mister. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't. But uh, it was a very male-dominated Thing over there too and she is a physician of course mm -hmm. and so you know even over there the process of changing you know she would see a patient and old woman would say okay dear where, when's the doctor coming you know this, this sort of thing but but now it's becoming more of a, an accepted so that transition period with the language that you're talking about like even that mr well, did, yeah. did they start to use doctor, physician? Uh, no, I, I think that's, I mean, I presume. It's been a while since we were over there, but I think that uh, even a woman who is a surgeon, it's a it's a special designation. It's funny, you mm -hmm. study so hard to become a doctor, and then you study even harder to become Mr. <laughs> but Stay but if you're a woman who's a, a surgeon, I would assume you'd still be called Mr. Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. Anyway, who knows? what? What's, that's sort of a side topic, but the point is, that when you're talking about sex roles that are socially conditioned uh, and, and cultural and, you know, maybe there are some things, there is sexual dimorphism in terms of differing strengths. So for, when we talk about women's sports, for example, there are differences in general ways between men and women physically. So some of the... And, that, and the sex, that's related to biological sex. Correct. It's nothing to it's do with gender. It's related to biological sex. That's right. So some of the roles and expectations and uh, stereotypes and whatever probably follow some of the that sexual dimorphism. Mm -hmm. So that exists, but the moving away... And before we go to... We have so much we could... We talked for five hours, I know, but 
what is happening, and I, I think we've assumed a lot because we know what's happening here, but for mm-hmm. our viewers, what, what are we looking at in terms of the on the ground stuff that's going on? The movie does a great job of presenting the trajectory, the, the steps along the way. But why is this a problem and what's happening, especially to kids mm-hmm. at this moment? Well, going back to the whole gender dysphoria that became this phrase and use terminology to try to explain why there were not just girls anymore and then they moved to boys. Yeah. And all of this is legal. It's really a why it's so important is because this dangerous experimental process of focusing on genitals for girls, healthy breasts being removed. Yeah. So there's surgery going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's happening in Virginia. It's happening to kids. Yes, and it's happening in Virginia. I was asked this, and I said, and they said, well, how can you prove this? And does it happen without parents being aware or giving their consent as well? I don't know. We'd have to have, we'd have to actually know. But even if it does, I mean, it's still something we should be talking about because there's a child. All of it. It's being affected. Yeah. But this thing of why it's so important is because this has been going on for years. What is this that has been the going on? The surgical removal of yeah. children, minor children's really? body parts. By Oakland, years, what do you mean? Oakland, California, 2019, 12-year-old girl had her breast removed. Yes, breast. okay, yeah. Okay, and most people know about that because of a yeah. sleuth that literally We're not got talking footage. decades, we're talking several years and, at this point. Well, actually, no, I mean, you could go back to the 50s and before that. I mean, we know that so-called sex reassignment surgery, yeah, yeah, yeah. which, which is, is never a misnomer as well, because you cannot. Well, that's been going sex. on, for, yeah. yeah, what since yeah. the 30s or something like that. There's yeah. always been this experimenting going on, but in terms of this becoming a literal, this is a, I want to say it's a crime wave. It's really the largest medical scandal yeah. that we've it's had. A, it's a, it's a because yeah, movement. We go back to language. You start getting rid of women. You start getting rid of biological sex. You start getting rid of then understanding. What is a woman? Yeah. What is a man? You know, another film could be made for that. It would be mm-hmm. great. But the, the whole thing is, is that the goal is remove biological sex, get us so confused about mm-hmm. sex, but start using gender. Yeah. We can see this with women's studies got changed to gender studies. Some of those got changed to queer studies. Really? Okay. Oh, queer has been in there. It was an epithet used to get gays and lesbians and anybody that was bisexual for years. But there's so much that, see, even in, in having a conversation about this because we talked about some you of this Go down many before. rabbit trails. So huh? I'm yeah. trying to stick with a little bit with the film and why we got to where we did and why we decided. And Vera Linder is the name that, that she uses, the producer. This was her brainchild. She said, I want to focus on, and, and I remember like yesterday, her calling me and saying, how would you like to make a movie with me? You know, I found another mom who was having a similar issue in her family with a gender dysphoric child. These are both women that work in the whole Hollywood system. There are Mm -hmm. thousands of people that work in the Hollywood system. Nobody would ever know their names because they're doing all this stuff behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Maybe their name comes up in the credits. Maybe it doesn't, you know, Mm -hmm. that stuff. But if either of these women's names actually came out people knew who they were this goes back to the beginning of our conversation because you said what are the you know the consequences cancel culture everything that's it you don't get hired anymore that's why a lot of people don't speak out Mm -hmm. they don't even say anything at the water cooler anymore like you and i working at some place and we used to talk what did you see this weekend you know what did you do this weekend oh if i say what i really did maybe i went to church oh yeah that's danger oh my god um you know maybe i went to an atheist meeting oh my god Mm -hmm. there's the religious thing has always been it's been really important in america yeah for us to be polarized, red, blue, you know, can Democrat, yeah. atheist, Christian, uh, Muslim, whatever, black, but race is a huge thing. That's why CRT, you know, mm-hmm. came in to divide us and everything. At the so, very moment when uh, when people are coming together and, and sort of mending these things, all of a sudden, interesting? It, is, yeah. it, is, it is interesting. Yeah. And it's definitely not a coincidence that that happens. No, chaos has been designed when I say about decades or this stuff has been going for decades. Yeah. For years and years, people, surgeons have had the legal right under the guise of, of plastic surgery, under okay. the guise of especially, well, in America, it was yeah. more profitable than it used to be, I think, in England. And I'm not an expert on the NHS, but I know that um, I've been learning a lot about these things in other countries and what's going on, mm-hmm. like in Australia and New Zealand. Medical systems are different. But in America, it's all about it's all about profit and testing and experimenting to see what's going on. I mean, when you decide you're going to accept the idea 
that there is more than just a woman or a man as a human species. Mm -hmm. They are literally in medical school now teaching that there are two kinds of human beings. It's not just men and women. That'd be the normal answer. And and then they this red herring gets thrown out. Or what about intersex? Intersex people that are born rare condition, and when they're born with that, they're still fine filters and they're it, still it, found yeah whatever, either yeah. into Jacobs. you know male yeah. or female basically yeah. that. So throw that red herring right out. Right. Intersex people don't even want anything to do with this right. issue. I know. There's men and women, but now, literally, the two human beings that they're talking about and teaching medical students are cisgender. Oh, yeah. And transgender. Yeah. So here's the, here's the yeah. goal. Get all of us thinking that there's some kind of third human being. Because anybody that calls themselves a man or a woman now, well, you're cisgender and your presentation. Yeah, so you're is, part of category A. Oh, I'm not. I'm, In this the category, equal, I'm uh, category yeah. turf. I mean, the trans exclusion. Yeah, no, but I mean, you're telling somebody that you're part of one category and yeah. two categories are of equal, you know, equal reality, uh, validity, whatever it is. And right? they're trying to tell children that, again, conflating sex with gender, there's over, you know, a hundred or a thousand genders. And yeah. there are words, literally, that have come up for all that stuff. All that's designed to confuse children. This is the same stuff that's happened in communist China. You know, yeah. you've got a local here in Virginia who's fantastic. She Van Fleet. Oh, my God. She's a friend. Of, mean, you met her the other night. I did meet her the other night. Was that the first time you met her? her? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I was yeah. looking at her. She came into the... Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we were doing the talk and the screening. Yeah. Wonderful. And I was looking at her and I kept thinking, she looks so familiar. We're going to get so her familiar. on this channel too soon. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, but I mean, this is the stuff of... and and. Um, the woman who conceived of this film and everything, she knows communism mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And it's one of the things that, again, you look at the patterns or the suppression of speech, the, the suppression of thought, yeah. the thought criminal stuff starts to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, come up. All of that. Again, I may not like what you think about. I may not like how you got there, but you have every right mm -hmm. to express that. I'm not going to try to squish you down. What happened to debate? Why aren't we, yeah. you know, dealing with that stuff anymore? So this thing of cancel culture is affecting not just people in Hollywood and people in the arts, which I have another example of that, but, but you and me and anybody yeah. that's doing anything else. I recently had a retail job working at a, at a large supermarket chain in, in California. There were only a few people that I could share little bits about myself, what, uh, the work that I was really doing, mm -hmm. you know, not when I'm not at this part-time job. You mean related to this stuff? Yeah, just, which yeah. has been, yeah. I mean, in 2021, which is where the producer found out about mm -hmm. me, I was helping to orchestrate, orchestrate with other people across the country, mm -hmm. protests in front of pediatric gender clinics. So we're talking Boston, a bunch of Mormons in Utah and Salt Lake City, New York radical feminists and and moms with that that were learning about activism and trying to figure out what's going on you know fighting their their daughter yeah. who thought she wanted to have her breast cut off and they're thinking I see that more people are what who are the, so people meeting each other and that's how activism happens around anything mm -hmm. I come out of the anti nuke movement I come out mm -hmm. of animal rights activism many people that are have been fighting this come out of the green movement in some way environment nature. And they started to see, I met women that were in the birthing movement, doulas, midwives. Mm -hmm. That's one of the first, Mary Lou Singleton was one of the first women in this country. She is in New Mexico, I believe. Mary Lou Singleton is a midwife. I hope I got, I hope I get that right. And they started changing the language in midwifery and saying things at, you know, they have annual conferences just yeah. like other people do. And, oh, there's a new thing this year. And I think this happened in 2017 or 18 might have even been earlier, where women had been delivering babies, working with women, all this stuff, you know, very female-centered thing, and this was not my world, and this is this is something, again, that we can't be in everybody's worlds. It might be the arts, it might be this, you know, the birthing community. I found out from these women educating me, they were telling us we can't use the word vagina anymore. We're not supposed to use really? breastfeeding anymore because it's not inclusive enough. Wow. Men can chest, chest feed, feed. But here's the thing. Yeah. We look at all this and the patterns of affecting yeah. the arts, the medical world, uh, libraries, teaching, all of this, sports, 
-hmm. prisons, incarceration, um, every possible aspect that we think about with society is becoming meshed so that we are supposed to accept the idea of literally, again, I know most of the parents I know have always taught their kids, don't talk to strangers. Like, just, you know, don't, mm -hmm. it could be dangerous, right? Now it's, oh, go ahead and talk to that nice man. Go ahead and talk to that nice person who yes. is a, you know, six foot four guy in a dress, a wig. Yeah, don't assume that. That looks like a Halloween costume. Yeah. Oh, he has an identity. We don't want to be cruel to him. Yes, that was our neighbor. His name was John. But he's Janie now. Be nice to him. And that's what we were told as lesbians, which is not just a sexual orientation, lesbian, gay, all that. We had a culture. There's no more lesbian community anywhere. There's no more really gay men's community anywhere. If anything, they're just small groups of friends meeting in homes. They're not the yeah. women's music festivals in a large part anymore that are women only. And to be able to say that, we used to, it was built in. Now you have to say you know, mm -hmm. this is, this is mm -hmm. happening. But for parents who are having their kid come home from school and say, my new name is Mike. Yeah. And again, it typically started with the girls mm -hmm. and they're like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm coming out to you, mom and dad, just like much like gay and lesbian. Here's mm -hmm. again where the confusion is, you know, girl could be 10, 12 years old, 13, 16. Yeah. My name's Mike. I want you to do that from now on. They've been calling me that at school. Now the parents are finding out what, how long, well, my yeah. whole fourth grade, oh, my whole fifth grade, yeah. my seventh grade, my 12th grade, I have been Mike at school. Mm -hmm. They know nothing about it. And then they start to go down the rabbit hole and find out that the girl has been lying to them for yeah. a lot. Well, what else is she lying about? Oh, she got her hands on some maybe street grade testosterone, mm -hmm. went to Planned Parenthood. It does not take much. And Planned Parenthood is giving. This is one of the things that came up as well. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Puberty blockers, which are not reversible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Puberty blockers, which used to be for sex, male sex offenders to help create impotency, obviously. Yeah. Castrate. Yeah. But chemical castration. Yeah. Puberty blockers were used for that. Lupron was a big big one and then they start giving these to kids eight years old nine years old ten years old you've got a kid getting puberty blockers mm. all we have to do is look at jazz jennings that is the poster child right. of what i would say a mount a munchausen mother who thought that her son was really supposed to be a girl isn't mm -hmm. he cute in a dress and blah 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 i mean yeah. jazz jennings himself he hasn't said it lately and i'm using the proper pronouns <sighs> jazz jennings is a he he will always be a he it doesn't matter what he looks like what drugs he's taken mm -hmm. i feel nothing but empathy around that mm -hmm. young man he said he probably would have grown up to be gay he has said that and that's why we know one of the reasons and, and, and it's in our film which focuses on detransitioners those are men and women who started to go down the path with wrong sex hormones. I think all of the ones in our film, they were all older than puberty when they started to do the wrong sex hormones, so they didn't do puberty. But we know from puberty blockers now because of these young, brave men and women that are coming out and saying, I'm gonna stop this. I want it, I wanna go back to what I know my, you know, my birthright as a female, as a male. And I need to get my body regulated now and figure out. And for a lot of the women, their voices are already, <clears throat> you see this beautiful girl's face, young woman's face. Yeah, and, they've got and this deep, very deep voice, voice. coming yeah. up. That's not going to change. That won't, that won't revert. No. Yeah. And it depends on the age that they did it, how long they did yeah. it, and also what else was going on in their, in their yeah. lives. There is a wonderful detransitioner. She's one of the kind of older ones. She wasn't a tiny child when she did this, but she's a professional singer. And um, she's just now, you know, she still has to practice with her voice and be careful to not, you know, not straighten everything because her voice changed enough. I mean, she got lower octaves, but she's now been off testosterone and she didn't take it for 10 years. I mean, that's yeah, a very different yeah. thing. Yeah. Also for men who've been doing estrogen, depending on what age. And again, if they went from puberty blockers to wrong sex hormones, you start with a, a, a preteen by the time they hit what would have been their puberty, and for boys changing their voices and whatnot, the looks, the estrogen that they're taking, um, 
everything they're doing to their bodies changes the secondary sex characters a lot. And as I say in the film, it can be kind of tricky. This is why I believe this has been a decades long agenda in more modern times yeah. to create chaos, mm -hmm. to create the breakup of families in our societies. And I know I had arguments years ago when Phyllis Schlafly time was around. Yes, I'm a lesbian from that time. And they say that gay and lesbian was all designed to break up the family. I'm talking to people that I know still believe that, who are talking to me and they're trying to process that they're speaking to a lesbian and realizing you know, I didn't break up any families, you know. But um, I understand why they think that sexual orientation and homosexuality specific or same sex attraction, the idea of breaking up families, they're seeing the same things and they put trans and that together. Let mm -hmm. me tell you, yeah. the LGB was a real yeah. movement. Whether you yeah, like so it or not, it was civil yeah. rights. Yeah. Don't kill us. Let us have a job. And there's a woman named Kara Dansky who's written a wonderful book. She's got another one coming out. But this book, if you haven't seen it, The Abolition of Sex. She's a lawyer. I think I've seen it. The reason this is, she goes exactly to this, to if once a culture starts, you, would you not agree? I mean, it's about language. We learn yeah. to identify It's always things. about language. Totalitarian learn, movements always start with language. Material reality. We know what we're talking about. Children learn the, the way that the world is yeah. and facts and things in yeah. the world. We look at science, biology, and all that. Now, if you wanted to tell me today that you decided that you are going to become a Scientologist... Mm -hmm. Well, that's a religion that yes. you're becoming, yeah. right? If you told me today that you think you really are a woman and you're that's trapped and you were trapped in the wrong body your whole life, as I know Danica Rome, who's running for Senate yeah. here, has told people, right? No, no, that's that, that now you're talking about a whole other you want to do that and you believe that that's a religion. I'm not a Scientologist. I'm not trans. You want to adopt that as a, as a religion? Do that. It's interesting that you mentioned that because I wrote an article recently, Loudoun County Public Schools. Okay. The equity statement, the commitment, oh, yeah. commitment to equity. Mm -hmm. And so they establish rules concerning all these different things. Of course, many things that most people would not disagree with, bullying and, uh, and uh, harassment and uh, racial slurs and anti-Semitism and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But they add in gender orientation, gender expression, and they declare in their official school policy mm -hmm. that non-inclusive speech, behavior, and actions do not reflect who we are as a learning community, and that the uh, policy of the school is to reject and condemn mm -hmm. anything not conforming to this. And so when you're talking about things being a religion, so that my article was... Uh, LCPS, Loudoun County Public Schools, announces establishment of religion mm -hmm. and persecution of dissenters, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is really what's happening. It's what's mm -hmm. happening to us in this discussion when, you know, when you cannot speak about, uh, you cannot take a particular point of view. You cannot even take the um, empirically supported point of view mm -hmm. because you are being persecuted as a dissenter from mm -hmm. the official established mm -hmm. religion. And that's, mm -hmm. I believe it's important that we start using language intentionally mm -hmm. as well to mm -hmm. uh, say what's really going on here. And it's what happened in Canada and what's happening there. Mm -hmm. There is an established religion in mm -hmm. the state mm -hmm. that uh, is not allowed to be uh, differed mm -hmm. from and dissented from. Mm -hmm. That's a serious uh, problem mm -hmm. for us, mm -hmm. I think. And it's why we're talking now. I know why, uh, you know, from a con conservative, having grown up conservative, I'm a Christian. I'm, you know, we probably agree on a lot of things and uh, mm -hmm. probably have differing experiences and views and things like that. But there's a lot sense. of common sense. So why I understand why many people on the conservative and the Christian side would be very concerned about these things going on. But here you come and you're you have made this and you've become and we've already talked. I think people mm -hmm. can get a sense mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. you're concerned about this, too. But why would the. Either the ordinary person uh, watching out there who who knows what their perspective or life experience is, but why would the liberal or the Democrat person in America, why should they be concerned about these things too? Because this is it's this is a dissolution of, of our entire society. We're looking at things now where you'll see um, an official newspaper headline that says woman accused of murder and rape of a yeah. child or something. And then you look and there's the picture of the woman and it's a guy that looks like a linebacker 
you know, and a total criminal mm -hmm. <laughs> who's murdered a child or whatever. But, the, but there it is, woman. We have to re, we have to fix the headline on so many things yeah. because what that they've they're reframing things like that because it's shaping culture. They've been doing this for years. It's, you know, we thought it started with Obama in the bathrooms, you know, and this stuff. And I remember mm -hmm. that coming up. And again, in my mind, and just a small handful of women that I knew, we were like, here's another thing. Now mm -hmm. they're doing this thing with the bathrooms. You so, noticed it then. Yeah. 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 Because a lot of women that have been feminists from out of the second wave, we're looking at all these issues of oppression of women or suppression of women and freedoms. Yeah. Again, and how women make money. If prostitution is an option, we've got a problem as a society. Mm. If pornography is an option, we have a problem mm -hmm. as a society. Now, these things, have both, both of those are just two things I mentioned that we can attack and talk about and agree or disagree yeah. on certain things. Well, and these, are, but, these are moral assertions, but they have a real world um, policy. And so... People say, no, you can't establish religion, but, you, mm -hmm. but, but you're saying, and I agree with you, that there's, no, there, there's a reason to... So to be you, concerned uh, about this. Right. So we, we hit upon the, the book banning thing, or that that's even yeah. something that's coming up, and it's not really book banning at all. But it's a concern because, and why, again, did some, you know, Republican politicians actually listen to their aides and their campaign people saying, I think you need to talk to this radical feminist, you know, mm -hmm. and there have been certain women that have been pulled in. Yeah. Yes, odd bed fellows for sure. But yes, this the part of the whole, the whole thing about this is that we move from, so we start talking about the film, we get into gender dysphoric kids, we start getting into the language. I brought up about Karadansky's book, The Abolition of Sex, yeah. Culture, how language shapes, but Language doesn't just shape culture. Language shapes, it gets instituted in the law. And mm -hmm. that's where we get the consequences right. of things. Yeah. Like even why it's legal that you could tell me that you have a son who's going to go and he's 12 years old and he decided he's, he's trans and he wants you to take him and he needs to have an orchiectomy, which is literally the removal of the testicles at 12 mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to understand it and everything. And you talk to me and I'm like, no, Dan, no, this is, <laughs> yeah. you're going, I know this sounds completely bizarre. He's a perfectly healthy child, but where did he get that from? The schools, the schools have received money yeah. for years and schools have needed help with outside people for years. What mm -hmm. do we have? Everybody knows we have a massive, tiny number of people that want to become teachers anymore in the system. For, for years, public schools have been reaching out to get people along comes gender spectrum, which yeah. brought up earlier. And all these organizations like, we have something really fun for your kids. We'd love to bring it to the school. And school's like, oh, well, that sounds pretty good. They're going to learn things. They're going to be at the library. All of these things, right. decades and decades. And I feel, and there's a woman named Jennifer Billick who has a, a, a blog called The 11th, and it's with two, two ones, the11thhourblog.com. Mm. She is an artist, a fine artist who started in the green movement and everything, again, very much nature-loving person and all that. She believed in biological reality. We're looking at 2000, something like 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there. In 2013, and I know it was Mary Lou Singleton that I brought up earlier, the woman in the birthing, the birthing community in that world, you know, said to Jennifer, there's, peop there's money behind this, I mm -hmm. think. When they were all wondering what was going on, Jennifer couldn't rent a facility for friends that were coming from out of town to talk about um, uh, green movement stuff. Yeah. You know, it was all about nature, and they believe in biological reality. And she was rejected by like three different places. This is New York City mm -hmm. in around 2012, I think, 13. She went, what is going on here? Because they just tell her, oh, I'm sorry, we can't do that. The group, you know, you want or whatever. I don't even know if she got that much of an answer. It was like all of a sudden canceled, changed yeah. and scheduled something. Yeah. Yeah. And she's an inquisitive person like I am. And she just became an accidental jur uh, investigative journalist and has exposed all of these connections within our government, mm -hmm. within medical corporations and this and that. We're talking the Stryker Corporation. Yeah. We're talking Jennifer Pritzker, who was a man in the military. And the Pritzker family mm -hmm. is massively influenced the, prior to the Obama administration. 
lots of people with big, big money, very profiteering. We are looking at the opioid crisis and have not even started barely to scratch the surface of the victims of that. And we talked about this the other night. Instead of seeing people passed out, totally dead in cars, we are seeing children's bodies. Yeah, mutilated. Mutilated. Yeah. They don't like to, you know, a lot of people don't want to use that word, but it's like, that's exactly what's up. And And now they're regretting it. Once a time when you would go to jail, yeah. For for doing physical abuse to a child, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. this is uh, is there anything about this that would distinguish it from being physical abuse? I mean, you're you are there is a now Again, it's medically approved. It's right. got the stamp of the government, and right. even our current administration and there's a lot of money pushing it. So I I didn't show you yet my book Red is Democrat, so I'll give you a copy as well. But in one place on on that, but it's a it's a it's a critique of a lot of these things. But uh, in one of the chapters, interestingly, I write about what is mentioned in this film and that is that there is well there's political benefit but there's also financial benefit Mm -hmm. to creating these victims and Mm -hmm. children who go through this process Mm -hmm. become lifelong customers whether the government's paying or the kids are paying or somebody else is paying and they have no they will have no choice but to support this growing and quickly growing uh industry how many billions of dollars now? I don't even know. I'd have to so there read char- Jennifer's that current chart. That chart is just going like going like that. And so what they're doing, just as with the opioids, am mm-hmm. I getting this right? Mm-hmm. They're also creating, harming people so that they will have no choice but to be customers and to support the industry. Absolutely. And if you saw, and I urge anybody to see this, it's on Netflix, the current film called, it's, a, it's the second that I know of, Dramatization. So it's not a documentary about the opi- opioid crisis. There was Dope Sick, which is a must-see, yes. and yeah. now there's Painkiller. Yes. It's another angle of what went on with the opioid right. crisis. And as you say that, again, interestingly enough, the Sackler family, which mm-hmm. was responsible for that, they're connected to puberty blockers. So I'm there's the, the thing. It's just like, yeah. you know, the loopholes and the things and the changing. It's like laundering money, you know, it creates something else to, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah. But the thing about the film, it, again, and, it, you know, kind of, I want to go sort of full circle with that. Yeah, is wrapping that up way. Yeah. Every filmmaker wishes and hopes that somebody's going to pick up their film and take it to another level. It yes. used to be, I mean, way before, you know, there was streaming platforms or anything. It would be a, a film. It would be a movie theater. And also a distributor often, they give money. I love your film. Here's some money. I want to own it. And let me see what I can mm-hmm. do with it. Mm-hmm. Deplorable films created by these people in Hollywood who know the business. They've yeah. been doing it for a long time. And they've put out other projects that a lot of people didn't get to see They knew they weren't going to make any money on this. And they were like, we'd like to take your film, Mm -hmm. work with you. We're going to be spending a lot of money. We like to rename it, do this thing, work together. You have all your resources and your contacts. Let's get a new audience and get this out in America. They got AMC theaters. Oh. Okay. So back in June. Of this year. Of this year. On June 21st, a Wednesday, they were supposed to have in 60 theaters, one of them was right here in Virginia, Yeah. 60 theaters of their, tons of theaters across the country, the film, Affir- as, as, as not affirmation, as No Way Back, the rebranding mm-hmm. and everything, was going to appear in 60 theaters across this country on June 21. Now, what's interesting about that is, you know, is the Gay Pride Month, you know, and now it's just mm-hmm. called Pride, you know, of June. They, yeah, again, yeah. wiping out even, again, Everything. lesbian and gay yeah. actual pride. Everybody can be prideful now. You know, straight people call yeah. themselves queer. It Except matter. for people who oppose what we believe. Yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. But so on the 21st of June of 2023. Yeah was online, people were buying tickets, it's going to show twice on the 21st of, of June at 4.30 and at 6.30, even two showings. We were so happy, oh my God. And then they were going to have another screening on Sunday at like 4.30 or something like that, or 2.30 mm-hmm. in the afternoon, the 25th of June. And all it took was for that to get out, and the fact that we oh. had been letting all this happen, you know, we'd, we'd been advertising the and all this, and-, and the, you know, the regime of of oppression and thought control and what do we call that oh yeah fascism correct comes along and amc was sent into like i don't know crisis meeting whatever i don't know and we do not know all the threats that they got or what happened but the friday before that wednesday 
it was absolutely, I will never forget this day, wondering what the hell, what's happening? You know, they're trying to decide because the use of social media to go against this and to start going after, you know, AMC, they're showing this transphobic movie, mm -hmm. which was, was so wonderful to do the screening that I did at Richmond International Film Festival because the audience that was there, they said, there's nothing transphobic mm -hmm. about this film. Yeah. This is like, you know, it's really important. Everybody should, you know, yeah. see it. We even have a doctor's version. This is a 90-minute film. We have a 40-minute for doctors, clinicians to see mm -hmm. because usually doctors won't yeah, sit for 90 minutes. Yeah. So it got pulled. They decided yeah. to pull it with no, you know, and they wouldn't, no comment, nothing. And it was like, oh, we had a scheduling, uh, we, you know, right. a scheduling yeah. issue. But that was a crushing thing for us in that time because with the distribution of, of that, we were waiting for Deplorable to put out DVDs and stuff were going to happen after the film had screened. Now, in the film world and on the film net, if there had been a theatrical screening, and something has to go up and in public and people spending money on tickets mm -hmm. in order for anything to be able to get awards. You know, so, oh, I mean, literally, okay, if you're talking yeah. about the Academy yeah. Awards or, Gold, yeah. or you know, any of that stuff. And so it did not get to have that theatrical screening. It affects everything down the line from that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so then the thing was, okay, then what? So within day, it was like within days, they, they really got this going. And mm. the DVD and the streaming is available. You know, nowaybackfilm.com. Okay. That is from the new distributor. We had it free. We launched it free in February mm -hmm. on Vimeo. Okay. It was I mean, we wanted it worldwide. People could download it for free and, and Did it you know, get a lot everything. Of attention? Uh, oh, yeah. And we okay. trended on Twitter, which yeah. was fantastic, yeah. like twice. But I had mentioned earlier with you, just a quickie, the parents of rapid onset yes. gender dysphoric, you know, kids. That was the long P R O G D K. They are across America for anybody that is experiencing this. And there are a lot more parents might see this and they might become aware of this all of a sudden and hopefully they would catch this and know that there is a lot of support there are a lot of families that have already been going through this mm -hmm. since right before uh, lockdown in 2020 is when kids you thought were doing their homework like this while mom and dad might be in the other room doing their work and the kids like this on the phone at the same time they're in the zoom you know yeah. studying supposedly they're having the lecture with the teacher and what's happening over here and this is the thing that we always want to say to parents. Unless your child absolutely needs to have a phone, mm. iPads, anything. Yeah. Kids do not need to be on devices. They're right. incredibly addictive. Okay, if you have a That's phone, right. your kid needs the phone, yeah. you want to use it for the emergency or whatever, get it so that you're locking out the internet. They yeah. don't need to have the internet. Yeah. I mean, there's a million things about this, and I'm not the... Um, current expert on what all the stuff is happening. Again, there are these parents, they're exchanging information, they're talking about mm -hmm. things. And one of the huge things that has happened since 2020, so when people realize their kids are going to school and they're being lied to yeah. about basic facts and science and, and all that, yeah. they're, they're homeschooling. Schools they're should creating, not be teaching lies. There are more homeschooling yeah. communities and bringing people together. They're doing it themselves. Part of this, though, is the 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 absolute destruction of families that really started this book there's mm -hmm. an organization and it's a substack called pit okay. parents with inconvenient truth about trans this is phil this is like three years or something of stories of yeah. mothers and fathers and families of, right you know of their children coming home with this what is going on and it is bringing more people together. And again, the polar is, it, yep. this is the thing is that us working together breaks down that thing. They want us to be fighting. It's yeah. just like the political parties and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Miriam Grossman has been looking at this issue for a long time. She's a psychiatrist mm -hmm. who has seen this. She's been waving the flag, you know, about this. This is her new book. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Translation. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll get you all the links. To these well, yeah, things, we'll put but, links for all these at the bottom. But of this yes, video. Our, our our website too, the original affirmationgenerationmovie.com is a resource. Okay, it's not the only one. There are plenty that are out there. But just remember that here in Virginia, where I'm assuming most of your um, viewers and oh, stuff they're all over listen, the world. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, where we are in Virginia, that I just found out from the host that is having these been fantastic that there is a law since uh, 2020 
that went into effect, right? You and I were talking about this. Yes. That will allow people... It used to be difficult to get their birth certificates changed. It should be difficult for anybody to get their birth certificate changed. That affects our statistics, everything. It's an identifier of who uh, of the of the of the person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And now um, the, they used to have to go through what was called sex reassignment surgery, which you know again isn't anything that's yeah. real. Now nobody in Virginia has to do anything. They're able to change and get their birth certificate changed. Yeah. So that's a major change. That's a major shift in our that's like everything. Using the wrong pronouns for somebody, you know, this guy named John. I'm not going to call him Jane, and I'm not going to refer to him as a she or her. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen because that is where the grooming starts. Yeah. Makes you look particularly if in front of me you do that, you're trying to compel me to see this man as a woman. Yes, I'm not going to do it. It's very coercive, isn't it? It's extremely coercive, and that's the thing. Again, workplaces, everything, yeah. we're all supposed to go along. Isn't that what they did in Nazi Germany as it well? Yeah. The Fuhrer is our father? Yeah. Uh, uh, no. So critical thinking needs to be really instilled. Thank Debate, you. which we goes back to language. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm on my, you know, I'll get off of my... my <laughs> yeah, no, no. Well... Um, Pulpit. So uh, this is... Obviously, really important stuff for us to be thinking about. Thank you for taking the time to put all the effort and work into making that film Thank and you. getting it out there and for traveling around and speaking with uh, all of us about this. I mentioned to you, and we will have very soon another subsequent video on this channel uh, talking with a man who has been successful in uh, litigating and gaining some a vindication for parents and for kids who have been mutilated through Detransitioners, uh, these, de- de- detransitioners, yes, term, yeah. correct. Wow. And so uh, these are these are issues we're going to be seeing, unfortunately, more and more of this. Mm-hmm. Um, but we need to be thinking about this, and so thank you for thinking about it, Joey Bright, for thinking about that with me and for thank sharing you so much. your information and uh, and experience. And we have four here. lawsuits in the country now. They're all they're all young women. But four lawsuits. I think all of them are against Kaiser. At least three are. Is that right? For he- yeah. yes, for for feeling like I didn't know everything I was doing right. when you did this to me to the hospitals, the yeah. doctors, the therapists, everything. It's going to take more lawsuits. We're going to see thousands. Of that needs to happen because yeah. it changes the di- the power dynamic in this in this thing. Absolutely. Thank you so thank much you for much. having me. This is wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah.